Russian and Ukrainian armies prepare for major battles in 2025. Solemn flag raising ceremony marks 79th National Day. People nationwide remembers Uncle Ho on National Day. You're watching today's news on NTV channel. My name is Ha Zhang, your host. According to the British newspaper The Times, the armed forces of the Russian Federation and the armed forces of Ukraine are preparing for the large-scale offensive operations that could significantly change the course of the conflict in 2025. The armed forces of the Russian Federation are planning a series of offensives, aiming to control strategically important settlements in Donbass. The Russian command intends to concentrate its forces on controlling Chasovya and Pokrovsk before the onset of winter. These cities are located on the territory of the self-proclaimed Donetsk People's Republic and are key to consolidating their positions. According to the newspaper, the control of Chasovya and Pokrovsk will allow the armed forces of the Russian Federation to create a springboard for the next offensive in the Dnipropetrovsk region, which is expected to begin in the spring of 2025. Meanwhile, the armed forces of Ukraine are preparing a large-scale counteroffensive, which will be carried out in several sectors of the front. This offensive will aim at repelling and disrupting the plans of the armed forces of the Russian Federation, as well as regaining control over the lost territories. The Iran State TV said on Sunday that the helicopter crash in which Iran's late President Ibrahim Raisi was killed was primarily caused by weather, citing the final investigation report on the incident. The main cause of the helicopter crash was the complex climatic and atmospheric conditions of the region in the spring. The report added that the sudden emergence of a thick mass of dense and rising fog caused the helicopter's collision into the mountain. In May, Iran's army had similarly said it had found no evidence of criminal activity in the crash. According to the report, there were no signs of sabotage in parts and systems. On May 19, the helicopter carrying President Ibrahim Raisi and his entourage, including Foreign Minister Hossein Amir Abdullahian, crashed while returning from the Iran-Azerbaijan border, killing all nine people on board. Iran has opened an investigation, but has found no signs that this was a terrorist attack. A solemn flag raising ceremony was held at Bading Square in Hanoi on Monday morning in celebration of Vietnam's 79th National Day, September the 2nd. From 5:30 a.m., thousands of people gathered at the historic square to witness the flag raising ceremony. To the accompaniment of military music, the honor guard marched from the corner of Hung Vuong Street and La Hong Fong Street to Ba Din Square. The flag-raising ceremony consisted of 34 honor guards symbolizing the first 34 soldiers of the Vietnam Propaganda Liberation Army, the predecessor of the Vietnam People's Army. At 6 a.m., the flag-raising ceremony began in a solemn atmosphere. The flag was slowly hoisted to the national anthem, reaching the top of the flagpole as the anthem concluded. Outside, people solemnly and attentively watched the red flag with a yellow star flutter. The flag-raising ceremony is a sacred, emotional moment that many people in the capital and tourists often look forward to witnessing many times. Coming up next are some updated news. Image these days, the bustling atmosphere covers all the roads of Gayen. In the border district of Kishon, the Hmong people in the remote border area have a unique way of celebrating Independence Day, associated with the bullfighting festival. Since the beginning of August, the fighting bulls have been carefully taken care of to prepare for the festival. After the bullfighting festival ends, people slaughter pigs and chickens to celebrate, families participating the festival often contribute a feast, all members have fun with jars of rice wine and dance all night long. In many localities such as Nam Dan, Dean Zhou, Yen Than. These days, many activities have also been organized enthusiastically such as the team ceremony competition, camping, performing arts, sports, becoming a beautiful tradition that has existed for decades in these rural areas.
In the first eight months of this year, the number of international visitors to Ninbin increased dramatically with nearly 828,000 arrivals, more than three times higher than the same period last year, bringing in large revenue for the province. In order to have a sudden increase in international visitors, Ninbin province has implemented a strategy to diversify products and services towards quality and professionalism, constantly adding more nighttime products and services. At the same time, promoting domestic and international tourism promotion activities, especially through digital platforms, social networks, combined with organizing many events, many large tourism, cultural and sports activities. Guangbin province kicked off a traditional boat racing festival on Nyatla River. This is a beautiful feature in the cultural life of the people of Guangnin district to pray for favorable weather, peaceful and happy life. The traditional boat racing festival of the people in Guangnin district has been initiated and developed for more than 500 years. Up to now, the festival has developed and changed to suit the practical situation but still promotes good cultural values, demonstrating the martial spirit of the nation, meeting the spiritual and cultural needs of the people. The festival has been recognized as a national intangible cultural heritage in 2022. Moving on to the today's story. On September the 2nd, the National Day of Vietnam, people across the country relieved the heroic and sacred atmosphere of the revolutionary autumn of 1945. The image of President Ho Chi Minh on the historic batting square officially declaring to the world the birth of an independent Vietnam is forever engraved in the minds of Vietnamese people. 55 years after Uncle Ho passed away, people still remember him with the most sincere and sacred feelings. From early morning, people from all over the country came to Kim Lian Relic Site, holding fragrant bouquets of flowers to respectfully offer to Uncle Ho. Among them, Ms. Hung's family traveled more than 300 kilometers from Buckney City to be here very early. The first time returning to President Ho Chi Minh's hometown, seeing the Tatches Roof house, the souvenirs associated with Uncle Ho's childhood, Ms. Hung and the people in her group could not help but be moved and emotional. We live near Hanoi, so we often visit Uncle Ho's mausoleum on this occasion, but this time we paid a trip to Uncle Ho's hometown and I was really moved. For every Vietnamese person, returning to Kim Lian on National Day is even more meaningful, like returning to the sacred source to express gratitude, remembrance and infinite gratitude for the great contributions of President Ho Chi Minh, who devoted his whole life to fighting for national independence. Today I am very happy to visit Uncle Ho's hometown. On National Day, my family wear red flag yellow star shirts to visit Uncle Ho's hometown, both to remember him and to help the children learn about the Kim Lian relic site. In the most beautiful autumn days of the country, every Vietnamese citizen turns to be loved Uncle Ho in different ways, but above all, from the border of the hearts, President Ho Chi Minh is integrated into the country's mountains and rivers, eternally existing with the Vietnamese people. It's time to say goodbye. Thank you for watching and see you next time.